Hi friends, welcome back. So today's build is an, a build that I've been doing in my personal time. Um, and it was sort of like a mountain ski resort type lodge with, uh, there's about seven chalets on this lot. Um, so what I was starting with was just mapping out where I wanted everything to go on the actual lot itself. I tend to do this with a lot of my builds that are a bit bigger just so that I can kind of get the idea in my head because I don't plan any of these lots. Um, I just kind of go with the flow. <laughs> so I was kind of doing a little bit of terrain manipulation. I wanted it to be a little bit hilly, a little bit rocky. Um, so you'll see me just laying everything out how I kind of wanted it to begin with. Um, and this was mostly me just testing out the new uh, Snowy Escape Pack. I haven't really had much chance to use it yet, so um, I kind of really wanted to base a lot of this build quite heavily on it. So I was just preparing all of the terrain to begin with before I started getting the chalets down, which you'll probably see in just a second. The idea behind this one was that I was kind of thinking along the lines of some sort of like mountain chalet sort of um, yeah ski resort type of thing. I didn't really have too much of a plan in my head before I started building. Um, it was very much a wing it on the way type of thing. Um, so there is I think there's seven chalets in total and they all came with their own unique challenges um, which you'll probably see me tackle throughout the video. Um, but they're all kind of uh, raised on slightly higher terrain. Um, I wanted something that sort of was a little bit mountainous, a little bit hilly um, but not kind of too over over the top but a lot of like pine trees natural kind of natural terrain and stuff so I think it looks really good um, and I'm really happy with how it's turned out it took a lot of tweaking um, but I didn't really particularly draw my inspiration from anything in particular it was just kind of a few things I'd had going around my head for a while and I just tried to kind of incorporate them in one video um, so they're actually fairly small chalets they're only about one bedroom or so um, a couple of them do have, um, I think maybe, maybe room if you did ever end up downloading this. I don't know if I'm going to put this onto the gallery yet. I haven't decided if I'm brave enough to put it up there yet. Um, and there is a little bit of custom content, so I would probably have to change just a few things around as well. But um, in the bedrooms, I think I've just put one double bed in each one, um, but you probably can change them over if, if you wanted to have sort of single beds in. Um, but yeah, so this was me just starting out kind of, I wanted the houses to all look fairly similar, but different each in their own way. Um, I don't know whether to call them houses or chalets. <laughs> They're kind of one in the same. So um, this was me just tackling with the roofs. <laughs> I really hate, I really hate doing roofs. I haven't practiced enough um, in The Sims 4 doing them. So um, for me, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a challenge sometimes. So the idea was that I kind of wanted these kind of seven or eight chalets surrounded by um, what it started to be was a lake um, and that was kind of the idea that I had in my head and then over off to the left hand side I kind of wanted some maybe green areas like a pine forest or something um, but <laughs> as you'll see if we go through the video um, it evolved into something completely different. Um, but I really like the direction that it took when we were building. Um, I like not really planning things too much because I like being able to kind of go with my inspiration and kind of how I feel at the time. So I was just looking at kind of colors here. So I was kind of, I was toying between, do I make these kind of like multicolored, really bright and colorful chalets or kind of wooden, just natural, yeah, nat natural kind of woody chalets that you would probably find in in the countryside or you know in the mountains, like a mountain town or something like that. It's really interesting actually. This whole build really could take on a different kind of aesthetic depending on the kind of things that you changed it into. So I kind of looked at some of the snowy escape lanterns and things. You could really quickly change this into like a Japanese ski town, or you know you could change it into sort of like an American, um, like North America um, kind of mountainous um, resort type thing or you know a ski resort in France just by changing a few of the things around it and a couple of the aesthetics in the actual kind of build itself so it's pretty versatile if you wanted to kind of change a few things around in it um, which I probably will end up doing I never end up leaving my builds alone I 
think the majority of the build that I wanted to do was that I wanted to kind of make sure they all looked kind of fairly similar and that they kind of tied in with each other but each looked different. Um, I didn't want them to look too similar to each other so you probably see here um, I pulled out a few of the debug items. Um, in the end I didn't go with any of them, I decided to get rid of them all in the end. Um, and again with these um, doors and windows I actually changed all of the doors in the end because I didn't like them, uh, which you'll see me do quite a lot through my builds because I I really like how they look to begin with and then I kind of try and fit them all in for the aesthetic that I'm going for. As with everything in The Sims 4, all of the wood textures, which obviously what I was, you know, I was utilizing it really heavily in this build, um, none of them matched. So this was just the windows going in. I think it was the seasons I think these windows are from. I actually really like these. I use these a lot in my builds. Uh, the darker houses were a little bit easier to do, so the ones that were in more of a black or a grey tone, they were much easier to match because obviously you do have the black, grey or white to use, um, but it's kind of those mid-range like mid browns, those are the hardest to kind of match because, you know, you've got some lighter mid-range browns, you've got some darker ones, um, that house on the diagonal there was just such a pain. Um, I just couldn't get, <laughs> I couldn't get anything to go right in that house. Um, so it was a little bit of a struggle trying to get everything together but we got there in the end um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with how they look actually. So I always find that I spend quite a lot of my time kind of um, looking at the kind of textures and colours and you know, floor tiles, wall tiles, those sorts of things, everything, trying to make everything match and sort of cohesive and and look good together. Um, and I always end up forgetting something. So you'll see me kind of darting around the build. Um, the, the little bit later on in the video you see when I panic completely because I forget to add stairs into like all of the builds and then I struggle for the next 20 minutes trying to get all of the, the stairs in. Um, and again with the terrain as well I had to do a little bit of changing of the terrain to make sure all of the steps and stairs and things go in. It gets a whole lot complicated later in the video because I decided to make things really difficult for myself um, but it was worth the struggle in the end because it looks amazing. I'm really really happy with how it looks. I think I actually changed the colour of this little chalet in its entirety. This started off as like a pale warm tone grey with a warm tone greyish wood um, and I think I actually completely changed it over to something like a chestnut brown. <laughs> so here's where you'll see me changing the doors because I realised that that door looks so much better. I think it was from Get Together. It looked so much better and the tones just matched a little bit nicer. So yeah, here was where I was changing all of the colours over. This chalet on the corner, yeah, gave me no end of issues because everything was on a diagonal. As we know, in Sims 4, nothing likes to cooperate when it's on a diagonal, so you're going to see me struggle. Yeah, I think it's now very quickly with the stairs that are here. I actually come back and change 
almost all of the stairs on all the chalets. Um, and I kind of like building like this. I always have done. Um, I kind of set out what I'm doing to begin with. And then kind of as I progress through the build, I kind of discover new things and work things out and think, all right, okay, that's going to work so much better. Um, and I just redo the lot. So yeah, it, uh, it looked a lot better once it was sort of more or less finished. Um, the build still isn't finished now. This was a fairly mammoth build part that I did here. This was probably about eight or nine hours, I think in total over two days that I did, um, just on this part that we're watching at the minute. Um, it's still not finished. I've probably, de I think I've decorated two or three three maybe I think I've just finished the third chalet now I think I'm just starting on the fourth um, and then we've got three more to go um, getting them all built up inside and, and kind of habitable um, if that's the right word so we're almost finished so I would probably say I've got another couple of hours in this build still but um, as probably I'm sure a lot of people do that are builders in Sims 4 I spent last night on Pinterest looking at new builds to start building because I find that with Sims 4 I kind of do this like mammoth building set for you know a couple of months where I just build every day all day every day any spare time I've got in building um, and then I kind of have to give myself like a month break from the Sims because I just build myself out <laughs> um, so last night I was on Pinterest and I've got a few really fun ideas that I want to try I really want to try the new platform update I haven't been able to play with that yet I mean I'm only just getting around to playing with um, snowy escape now that's my kind of my next go-to is to have a look at the platforms update um, as and when I get around to it I haven't got the new um, paranormal pack just yet but I will do probably in the next couple of weeks um, I tend to only kind of buy the packs as and when I come to use them I'm not kind of one of the hardcore gamers that goes out and, and gets them on the day of the release. I kind of just pick them up as and when I come around to using them. So um, I probably will use some of them soon. So I've got some plans of some houses that I want to try once I do get those together. So as you can see, I, I was flitting back and forth to a couple of the other chalets because I forgot to add windows, which is not unusual. Um, as always, it's never, it's never something small that I like to forget. I like to forget major things like windows and stairs. The build itself changes quite drastically, fairly shortly, um, where I decide to suddenly... Um, I mean, I always kind of wanted to give the um, waterfalls a try uh, in the debug menu, but I've never been brave enough because I always thought I was going to end up cocking it up <laughs> um, and just making an absolute mess out of things. So. Um, I haven't actually got around to using them yet, but I decided this was the build. This was the one where I was going to give them a go. So um, you'll very shortly see me start toying with a few rocks. And I started off thinking maybe I could do a mountain, um, you know, with some snow cover covered rocks and things like that, because I could see in the debug menu that we've got some new bits and bobs from the Snowy Escape uh, pack. So yeah, so this is where I started changing the stairs around with a few of the platforms because they just looked a little bit better. And I'm trying this year, it was, um, as I mentioned in my previous video, it's been my New Year's resolution to kind of expand my knowledge with Sims builds. I mean, I've been building on The Sims for about probably 10 years now, if not a bit longer than that. Um, but I've never really kind of uh, come out of my comfort zone. Uh, I've always been a very safe builder. Um, so this was my, it's my foray into the dark side. So this is where I'm just deleting all of that kind of painting, my directional paintings. And this is where you suddenly see me start to go a little bit experimental on the build and just kind of pushing the boundaries. I was like, you know, let's just give it a go. If, we, if it goes wrong, we can delete it. So I did start off with this kind of train manipulation where I wanted to kind of go for a mountain. I still wanted to be able to walk around the lake. So you can see me flattening off 
flattening off around the lake there. This was just smoothing a little bit, just so it didn't look like they were just perched on on little high peaks in the middle of nowhere. So I was kind of just, you know, refining a little bit of the terrain. Um, and that's where I decided the mountain was no good. It's got to go. <laughs> I'd had enough. Um, and then this is where I was trying a few other things. I think you'll see me flitting into debug, probably getting a few rocks out now. And this was just me really experimenting so this is why this is not the most polished video um, because it was never really intended to go on YouTube but I thought it's always nice to see other people going through a learning curve So this is where I always find going into the debug is, is dangerous territory because you kind of start picking out things and thinking, oh, this will be good. And, you know, where can I put this? And um, I kind of have to restrain myself to be like, no, just stick to the build. So this is me just pulling out lots of different things. And then I discovered the waterfalls and I was like, oh, inspiration came to me. So this is where I start trying to decide whether I'm going to completely edit the lake or if I'm going to... Um, just take the whole thing out altogether. So I just started sort of start messing around really. Um, I was kind of wanting to try and keep all of those rocks there, but I very quickly came to the decision that I was going to then make a bridge. Um, across and I'd never made a bridge across uh, any water in The Sims before so um, this was <laughs> in hindsight I probably should have had a look at some tutorials online but I thought no being the stubborn female that I am I will do it for myself first um, trial and error it's always a it's always a good way of, of testing your knowledge and testing what you can do in The Sims by just trying out new things and seeing what, what works and what doesn't work I quickly found out that trying to put the bridge across the water didn't work so this was me kind of thinking maybe I'll have two pillars either side um, and in the end I just go for a very sort of standard diagonal, no less, bridge. Um, so it was not the easiest of things to build but we did build. So as you can see there was a lot of trial and error here of trying to work out what was best, where the stairs worked, where they didn't work um, and also the, the location as well because I wanted to keep that um, sort of lake in the middle so I, I, need, I knew I needed to try and get that back in somewhere so the bridge had to be inclusive but also a feature piece within the build itself so and I wanted it fairly close to the waterfall because I wanted it almost as if sort of the sort of thing you know when you go to a ski resort or something like that it kind of that's your feature piece for the resort you know let's go and look at the waterfall This is where I'm kind of more neatly now putting back in the original lake. And then again, <laughs> I just thought that's just, that's just not enough lake. I really want some <laughs> more lake. So I decided to pull it all the way down through the middle of both houses and then, uh, sorry, all three chalets. And then I realised that you can't get to all three chalets, so there was a lot of troubleshooting in this build without prior planning. This is why you should plan builds prior to building them. Just to make life easier for myself, I wanted to build another bridge. <laughs> so I kind of 
pulling on my knowledge of, of the painful experience that I just had building one bridge, I thought I'd do a second one, um, but at least I knew what I wanted to do this time now. The issue I had here was that the two chalets either side were on two different block clusters, so one was higher than the other, and if I raised or lowered them, it would affect the whole build. So. I had to do a little bit of shimmying with some stairs, but I did work out that you could use stairs to bridge that gap um, in between the two, so we got there in the end. <laughs> but what I was essentially trying to get was this floating platform, because that was kind of the starting point for a bridge. Um, and I think that's probably looking back now on, on tutorials and things afterwards. Um, I think that is how most people build bridges, but I like to make things difficult for myself. And I like to try it first before, before getting somebody else to tell me how to do it. So. So this was me trying to struggle to make the two match, but we did get there, we persevered, and I very much wanted the idea that in this build that the the buildings and the actual location itself was built around the terrain rather than the other way around, um, because I have built some builds in the past where I've actually kind of built the terrain up after I've built the houses or the chalets or whatever it is I was building at the time, and, and it never looks quite natural, but with this, it looks like, you know, humans have kind of built around these huge rocks and they've dug out these kind of, yeah, so I just wanted to get to the point where, you know, it looked very natural and was kind of very in seating with, with the sort of location that I'd picked. That was the idea behind it anyway, so I think we're more or less coming towards the end of the video. I will be popping part two up soon, um, but I hope you've enjoyed this first instalment into my foray of building a resort, um, and I hope you enjoyed watching it and listening along with me, so um, I will see you in the next part, and thank you for watching. Bye guys! <laughs>